Hello and welcome to another end of year wrap up on Talk Toys. Uh, it's been a while. It's been 365 days, actually, give or take, uh, since we did the last one. And that was the 2022 wrap up. Well, this year we've been crazy and we thought we'd do the Talk Toys 2023 wrap up. Oh yeah. So we're going to be looking back, uh, much like last year and the year before, we're going to be looking back at the year that was um, in the kind of context of things that we've done this year, things that we've enjoyed. Uh, and as always, I'm joined by my three guests, Dan. Hello. We've got Tom. Hello. And Tim. Yo, 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 yo. And so today we... Uh, if you if you've listened to last year, you'll know we've got categories to go through. I'm going to be running through them, uh, but this year I've got some extra tech. I'm actually recording my screen, which mm. means I can do really cool transitions like this. Never mind, it didn't it didn't quite work as well as I thought, but never mind. Uh, we're going to jump straight into it. There's no need for a preamble because you you probably know how podcasts work at this point. So, uh, I've asked the fellas to go away and pick their choices for all of these categories. They've given them to me. I've made some slides. Uh, you can be impressed now. So, the first category we are doing for 2023 is the best game played in 2023. Now, as always, this isn't necessarily a video game that had to be released this year. This is a game that you played this year. That's the same for all categories. Uh, you know, some people might be choosing games or books or movies or whatever from like 10 years ago that is fine because uh, sometimes you enjoy something in a year that isn't necessarily out the same year so my nomination uh as you can see on the screen and by you i mean the uh viewer not the people on discord because uh i should i could i could share my screen maybe with you guys but it's too late now because we've started Anyway, yeah. my choice of video game, uh, and actually is a game that came out this year, is F-099, uh, hmm. which is, if you own a Nintendo Switch, chances are you know about it, it's the Battle Royale version of F-Zero, uh, you and 98 people race on a track, on an F-Zero track, and it's all based on the SNES version of F-Zero, um, and yeah, it's it's been really fun, I've been dipping in and out of it, I've played like... 15 hours of it or something it came out i want to say was it september or october something like that oh maybe it's the summer i can't remember um but yeah it's been a lot of fun and i think it's it's the one game of the year that i keep thinking like man i i got i got half an hour i'm gonna jump back into it it's uh it's a lot of joy if have, have any of you guys played any f-099 yeah no. well tom have, have you enjoyed it have you been yeah, so I've played uh, F Zero ninety nine a bit. Um, it is fun. Yeah, I I enjoy myself as well. Um, I've dipped a few hours into it. Um, I'm not very good at it though. Uh, <laughs> I will say I don't think I've um, ever really completed a race. It's because it's all a lot of it is about win deal runs, isn't it? It's yeah, not it's... just winning the one race. The... You've got to win deal a lot. So the cool thing and the the, the kind of uh, the, the difficulty of getting used to it is that your boost meter and your health are the same thing. So you you can constantly boost if you want, but you're probably going to die by the end of the first track. So you've got to like balance. Cause there's like a, a strip at the start of each lap that will replenish a bit of your shield, but. It's kind of that juggling thing of like, oh, do I do I boost on this straight? I'm going to be kind of low health, so if someone nudges me, maybe I'll explode. But maybe it'll be worth it because I'll be, you know, ahead of the pack and stuff. Yeah, it's uh, it's a lot of fun. It's a really simple game. Like, you know, once you've like learned tracks and stuff and know how to balance things, it's like fairly straightforward. But yeah, I I thoroughly enjoyed it, uh, and I think it's deserving of game of the year. For me. I'm surprised how seamless it is when you go into it. Mm. I feel like there's very minimal lowered in when I played. I don't know what it's like now. Recently, yeah, so but... the 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 play base has dropped off a bit as old new games do. So there are a lot of races now you'll jump into where like thirty or forty of the players will be uh, like computer controlled. They're not all live players. Um, 
But you know, it's it's not too bad. And especially on like the big weekends where they do Grand Prix every half an hour and stuff, you do still get a lot of activity. So uh, long may it live. Because uh, I know. Will well, we get an actual F Zero? Rest in peace, yeah. Mario. Uh, uh, maybe I don't know. I I I think. Yeah, honestly, hopes up. honestly, I think this has proven a lot more popular than maybe they anticipated. Because. Uh, like, even, like, for a month or so after it released, like, I was checking it on Twitch and stuff, and it was getting, like, thousands of viewers over different streams, obviously, but that's pretty rare. Like, if you look up a lot of Battle Royales, after, like, a few weeks, it's like, ah, okay, there's, like... The Tetris one is still going, so that's a good sign. Yeah, well, Tetris 99 is going. Mario died because they only gave it six months. Yeah, they um, said they were going to do that. They, and, they did warn us. Doesn't make sense still, but they did at least let us know whether that was going to happen. Yeah, and Pac-Man 99 did die, but after some reading up on it, it turns out it was Bandai's fault because they solely owned the game. Nintendo had nothing to do ah. with it. And Bandai were like, it's not meeting the figures we like, so we're shutting it down. It's like, oh, okay. So, you know, it, it is a Nintendo thing, so hopefully, if it lives as long as uh, Tetris, that would be cool. Right. On to the next slide. Oh, look at that. And we have, next up, Dan's nomination. Uh, Dan, do you want to tell us what it is? I've got it on screen, but tell yeah. the Yeah, well, what can I say? It's... I'm. Uh, if anybody knows me from the, the podcast, they'll know that I'm a stan for From Software. And once again, uh, it's, it's the latest game, uh, Armored Core 6, Fires of Rubicon. Um... Yeah, what can I say? It's a great mech game, and they've incorporated uh, elements from the Souls games into it, and oh, it just works. It just works. And the bosses, oh, chef's kiss. It's just, it's good stuff. And, um, uh, but Red, you played it as well, so uh, I have. I'm not the only one. Yes, I, um, I, I've i still yet to beat Balteus, <laughs> which is sort uh, of a notorious that... boss of Hewitt. Yes. Yes, very hard, but uh, um, it's all about, um, you know, changing up your mech. You're like, well, if this doesn't work, you know, try something else and experiment and then go back, play, replay other missions to get more and and just work on your mech. And, and um, yeah, I, I honestly, it's just, um, I, and I like the story as well. There's a lot of, like, like, like drama and it's over the top, but it, it works. And, and you think, oh, well, that boss was really cool and then you have another boss that was like even bigger or humongous or really fast and agile and um yeah there are, there are some one... particularly impressive missions uh the yes there's the again no spoilers but there's the like sand walker mission which if you've played you'll know uh yes. that was yeah honestly honestly the like I, I, you know, I regret that I got uh, sidetracked by other games, but yeah, it's a, it's a really fun mech game from from what I've played yeah. so far. Um, I've yet to try multiplayer. That's the only oh, thing. Yeah. I've, um, that's the one thing I haven't done. <laughs> but um, but um, I feel it's really good. So there's that, and yeah, yeah, I just yeah, I loved it. So there we are. A big mech thumbs up, which you can't do in the game, but you can you can yeah. customize it. I uh, so many co- customizations. I like the I like the horse legs. I don't know what the official term is. Horse but, legs. But you, you can get horse you, legs. You can get basically you can make yourself a centaur. So you've got like four oh, legs right. and then two arms. I get arms. what you mean. I was thinking horse legs. I was thinking actual horse legs. I was like something about yeah. a stroke or something. It's it's very yeah. cool, uh, and the customization is like. Uh, I mean, obviously you can customize your, you know, sort of your weapons and stuff, and you've got load, you know, load limits and things like that. But also, just like the visual customization is crazy. Like you can, yeah. you can make your own decals. You can change the color of like each individual part of each part of your mech and stuff. It's like, honestly, that I I probably spend a good like hour or two just like color coordinating I... my dude. Absolutely. I, t- I tend to, I mean, with mine, I had like a, I preferred the lighter, more nimble builds and because mm. I was just really fast and quick. But the, the only downside is that is that your your health is a bit lower um, 
otherwise. But uh, or you know, um, you could just go full tank mode, and uh, but you're then very sluggish and slow, and so there's there's lots of different dynamics that goes into play. But I love going super fast, and it because you you and uh, I'm there. I actually had like a carpal tunnel at some point with <laughs> some of the. But I was just like ah, <laughs> but nice. um, yeah. I don't know if that's a good thing or not, but yeah, yeah. I had so much. I had so much fun. So. It shows you were dedicated to it, and that's the main yeah. thing. Uh, right, we're going over to Tim's nomination. Uh, Tim, wow. I'll be honest, I didn't really need your submission for this. I asked all the guys to send me their nominations. So I was like, I don't think Tim needs to send me the game nomination this year. I know already, uh, but Tim, do you want to introduce it? I don't think it's a surprise to anyone who has spent more than 10 minutes talking to me that my pick of Game of the Year is Final Fantasy Theatre Rhythm Final Bar Line. I have clocked so many hours in this game, it is unbelievable considering it came out the start of this year. I did actually have to double check. I was like, no, it's been out two years. I can't have got like hundreds of I hours in a game same. over yeah. like a year. It, it can't be the case. I, 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 I must have been too busy, but no. Um, I really hope that my boss, Brian, is not watching this on YouTube um, because I've spent a lot of time that I should have been doing work playing Final Fantasy Theatre Rhythm. How many and hours? <laughs> Sorry. I, I uh, a couple of hundred, you know, normal, no, normal amount. Yeah, just rookie numbers. Hmm. Also, I'd, um, I'd just like to sorry, give a shout out to. I just got a, um, I just got a subscription from uh, Brian. Thanks, thanks, man. For oh, watching. oh, yeah. Uh, his YouTube name is Brian brackets Tim's boss. Yeah, yeah. It, it's a weird one, yeah. but you know, th <laughs> thanks, man. Though. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I, uh, the guys know I spent a hell of a lot of time on the 3DS game. Hmm. Um, Kurt and Cole was. Just absolutely fantastic, and I wasn't expecting another version to come out. I, I I never was. So when they announced it, I was a little bit like, oh oh oh. I was very excited, obviously, but I did realise it was going to be a uh, significant <laughs> part of my life and personality going forward. Um, to answer your question exactly, I have spent two hundred and forty-six hours Whoa. Whoa. this year. <laughs> what can I say? It's it's very addictive. I like it. I like a rhythm game. And I'm very fond of Final Fantasy. And not just Final Fantasy, but specifically Final Fantasy music. Not not bragging, but I was in like the top 0.5% of Nobu Amatsu listeners on Spotify this year. I mean, did he, did he, he give you a shout out? Bond. Well, he came over, he knocked on my door. He was like, Tim Sam, thank you very much for listening to my music all year. And uh, yeah, we had a little thought in them. I wish, I wish. But yeah, it, it did so many things better than, than the 3DS version. Obviously, being a console release, the kind of technical timing and everything of, of the songs mm. can be a bit more precise, which is, you know, good for hardcore fans, but it does make the game a little bit harder. Um, it's got extra difficulties, um, and, and the new difficulty is beyond. I think I've done most things that you can do in the 3DS version, so the fact that there are things in this game that will keep me coming back to it for many, many years, I'm sure. Um, it's quite exciting. The new songs have been absolutely stellar, mm. ranging across like almost every Final Fantasy game. There's like one or two that I wish got a little mention. I wish there was a couple of Dude's Dubers tracks. I wish they, you know, managed to give Gact enough money to get Longing and Redemption in there. That would have been fantastic. But I understand, I understand that, they, you know, they couldn't do everything. And a couple of Tactics Advanced tracks would have been nice. But... The music they did get from like Seven Remake, the Tactics, uh, they got stuff from Chrono Trigger, which is absolutely fantastic as well. Chrono Trigger, I didn't know that. Yeah, they got some Chrono Trigger music in there. They got uh, um, the World Ends with You, and the World Ends with You, which had some Nia? absolute bangers. See. Some Nia track, exactly. Um, so yeah, I, I cannot complain. Also, some nice little side stuff like they got some black mages tracks which is something mm. i've been wanting for a very very long time since the first theater of them came out so yeah absolutely absolutely nice. um very very satisfied with the game and it's one of those things where when i get excited for a game to come out i always, it, I always get the thing like it's not going to be as good as i get excited for like when a new pokemon game comes out i get very very excited and like i'm enjoying this but it's not quite living up to the hype Final Fantasy Theatre them always lives up to the hype. It just it it, it's, it does what it does what it sets out to do. Hmm. Yeah, it's, it's definitely an improvement. I've uh, I've not yes. spent anywhere near as much as Tim uh, on this game this year, but yeah, it's 
they've taken have. they've taken like uh all the things that made it good and then just like streamlined kind of things as well and the in- <laughs> i know it's a tiny thing but the introduction of rainbow perfect timings mm. is like it's it's that extra slightly addictive thing of like okay cool i got an all perfect but i didn't get an all rainbow perfect so like yeah, I'm a couple milliseconds off. I I could do better, and uh... exactly. And the endless world mode when you've completed all the mm. all the regular ones is a very addictive one as well. The amount of like leveling for your characters you can do is mm. is beyond because you can get them to level ninety nine, and you can get the extra levels. And yeah, they, oh they've yeah, done a lot to star keep people coming back for star levels. Are, yeah, yeah, yeah star levels. Uh, I mean, it, Really, it just goes to show how good the music is because oh, hmm. absolutely, from a whole range of um, of composers, mainly Nobuo Matsu, but a lot of other ones yeah. as well. And um, yeah, it, 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 it's for fans of the series, definitely. Yeah, nice. Uh, right, we are going over now to the last video game nomination of this year, and that is Tom's nomination. Tom, would you like to in well? I'll, I'll, yeah, it, it, introduce your thing because I've got a specific image on the screen. But introduce your nomination. Last year, so... Tom picked Fortnite, so there's not, there's not a lot that can surprise me from Tom. <laughs> um, uh... I, I don't know. I think I've talked about this one quite a bit now oh. uh, over the year, and it's a redemption story. So technically, unlike your choices, this game didn't come out this year, but the expansion did. So my choice is Cyberpunk 2077 plus the Phantom Liberty DLC. So for clarity, I've got Phantom Liberty on the screen just because technically that was this year's release. But yeah, it's both. So this, I bought Cyberpunk uh, in the same way that Dan did when it came out. And what a mess that game was. It was full of glitches... Uh, I had a soft lock, which literally, I, mi- I made a lot of progress in the game when it came out, and I couldn't save because of the soft lock I was in. That was going on. At that point, I said, I give up. I give up. It's glitchy. It's a mess. It doesn't run well. I give up as much as I was enjoying the story. Now, over over the time between now and then, they have put a lot of work into the game, uh, making it what it should have been. And in all honesty, the big one was when they brought this DLC out. When they brought this DLC out, they completely revamped all like the skill trees and everything. They made the game a lot more fun. So what I will say, I went into it, and you start in the regular game, and... The story, I played the start of the story already, and that is phenomenal. But I actually fully completed the game. I put over 100 hours into it, doing literally every bit of content I could think. Obviously, I've only done it one way. It's very replayable. Um, And wow, so good. It's The story is just phenomenal. Especially the DLC, actually. So... They managed to get some star power in the form of Idris Elba in the DLC, mm. oh, cool. who plays Solomon Reed, who was sort of a secret agent, sort of detective. And it's his likeness in the game as well, so it's not just him. Oh. They've, Keanu Reeves has also reprised his role as Johnny Silverhand. What and you come? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and what they've done with the DLC. It's more, well, it's called an expansion for a reason. It fully integrates into the game. What you do in the expansion can affect the game and the content going forward. And it manage, they managed to fit in Dogtown, which is the region in the DLC, seamlessly into the game. It's like kind of an autonomous region in Night City. Okay. And... Yeah, it had, honestly, the DLC itself, you play it within the game and you beat the DLC before you beat the main story. And it had one of the toughest choices for me. Um, I don't want to over-spoil it because 
it's yeah, really... probably a good idea not to spoil. Yeah, it. I'm yeah, not yeah. going to spoil it, but I, I will say it's in really. It's one of those morally greyer choices, hmm. and yes. there's no good or bad option. Nice. Well, they both feel bad, to yeah. be honest. Okay. I mean, and that's CD the worst Pro- thing. Yeah, I mean, CD Projekt Red. I mean, I, um, I played, you know, The Witcher and all its expansions and all the moral choices that you make in that game are, you know, there. Like you said, there isn't a, a good choice out of it. It's, you know, it's. You know, kind of morals and all this and that, mm. and it makes it more interesting, and that's what sticks with you. Um, you know, I, you know, as Tom mentioned, I played Cyberpunk when it came out, and it was, uh, it was, yeah, it was devastating because, uh, you know, you put so much um, excitement into wanting it, and then when you had it, it was not what it was on the tin. And but it's nice that you know they've actually redeemed themselves with the DLC. <laughs> Um, but at the same time, you, it's like you know, you you can't. I I I, I don't know. I I don't know how I feel about it basically. But it's like you know, I, I still think they're in the wrong for for what they did. But at least they've actually right. Okay, we screwed up. Uh, let's, did you play let's the DLC? Yet? No, that's the only thing. So I I would I. They haven't won you back. You they, haven't. No. You haven't they, played it since they've. No, it. I haven't. That's the thing. I haven't played it since. So I. But I'm. That's the thing because I had it on the base uh, console for the PlayStation Four, and it mm. it ran poorly. And basically, it just wasn't you know it wasn't optimized for that for that console or or even the Xbox for all that of their generation. So uh, I, I will play it inevitably, um, maybe on PC or Steam Deck. But um, I you know I'm. But I think with Tom's approval, I may consider it again. I think Which just okay to... With you, Tom, if that's... If it's okay. <laughs> of it's, course. Yeah. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay. Will... you're right then. I think, I think the game... I think the game had a bit of resurgence around the anime that we talked about. Yes. Oh, time. yes. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> I very much played it with the Sand of Istan because ah. I wanted to do that slow-mo combat and... That was for me the funnest way to play, and yeah, I I was just going around in slow motion, going behind people with a katana and slicing them up. I I absolutely loved it. But yes, Dan, it's it's definitely redeemed itself. Obviously, last gen consoles haven't had all these updates. No, I think they've actually said we're they not should do never. It. Have re- they should never have released it on so, last gen consoles, yeah. to be honest. Um, but yeah, it's worth playing now. I'd say pick it up on PC. I think I think there was even an update after I finished it, which ups the romance options on some of the characters. Oh. So I haven't really tried that, but it'd probably be even better now. So yeah, uh, worth a shot and worth going back to. Nice. Right, well, that concludes our video game section for the Talk Toys 2023 wrap-up. All right, it is time for the best film of 2023. Uh, Again, this isn't necessarily the best film of 2023. It's film watched in 2023. Uh, I say this because I'm pretty sure my nomination was not released in 2023. Uh, My nomination for best film is Nobody. Uh, the 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 joke is uh, I I didn't nominate anyone anyway. uh, but no oh. it's uh, nobody uh, starring Bob Odenkirk uh, I don't know who the director is or any of the the other technical things I didn't I didn't look that far ahead um, we might have heard of it it's it's um, the sort of the synopsis is it's uh, Bob Odenkirk plays an ex I think he's an FBI agent or a CIA yeah. he's sort of he, oh I think he was potentially a navy seal or something uh, and he's retired now but he gets embroiled in a local sort of gang uh who start targeting him and they kind of put him back into that world again and he decides to clean up the streets the only way he knows how which is uh brutally assaulting people in a variety of locations along with his pals the rizza and christopher lloyd 
Uh, who nice. So up. he cleans up the streets in this film and then he dirties them again in Better Call Saul. Yes. Uh, so, I mean, obviously, uh, a, a lot of the reason I watched this is because, like, you know, it's it's Bob Odenkirk. I re- well, I last year uh, watched Better Call Saul. So it's like, oh, that's really interesting. He's in a different role. And it's like, ah, I don't know if it's just going to be kind of like soul but a bit different but honestly he's he's pretty different he um you know he's he's obviously shown his chops as a very serious actor anyway but sort of i was impressed how good he is in an action role um i mean it's you know the the whole setup is he's sort of he's retired he's getting on and stuff but you know he's still got it 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 is ultimately just a really really good action film um if you if you're coming into it looking for like a deep plot and some like really meaningful characters might not be your kind of thing but as a big fan of sort of 80s and 90s action films like die hard and stuff uh or lethal weapon this this scratches that itch this like huh i haven't seen anything quite this good in quite some time uh yeah honestly i i I think it's fully worth a watch as a kind of popcorn flick it's very brutal at times um i think you know all the performances are great bob odenkirk is i mean he's great anyway but uh the trajectory of that guy's um career is interesting because he started off like in comedies Mm, yeah and michael scott famously yeah yeah. And uh, and even like Tim and Eric, uh, you know yeah. that that oddball show, and and I and he was in it, and 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 then obviously you know Brick and Bad often Better Call Saul, and yeah, he's just um, he's just slaying it right now. So I mean, actually, um, he's a lot like um, oh, who who plays Walter? I can I can never remember his name. Um. Well, whatever. You oh, know. Brian Cranston. Brian Cranston. Brian Cranston. I mean, he yeah. ostensibly sort of did the same kind of thing. That he was like, you know, it, Malcolm in the Middle. And well, it's weird. interesting. I, I was yeah. watching Seinfeld, and uh, he's in a couple of episodes, and I'm like, hey, ah. it's Brian Cranston. Yeah, he and, started uh, off as yeah. the goofy guy, and then kind of became like, oh, wow. He, I mean, I, I've, I've heard it said a lot of the sort of comedians, because you have you need such a range as a comedian the sort of playing the serious role is sometimes like just a natural thing it's like oh. mm. Adam Sandler did the same I guess Adam Sandler yeah Uncut yeah. Gems Pixels that was pretty Uncut brutal Jen. um <laughs> actually uh um Jack and Jill that that was that was phenomenal oh, that was uh, uh, we don't okay, talk about on. Jack and Jill it's it's on. On. All right. fucking it's rule between us we never talk about <laughs> That film. Right now. Let's move on to Dan's nomination. Dan, what did you nominate for film, uh, the best film you saw this year? I mean, what can I say? It's uh, it's Oppenheimer. Hey. It's Oppenheimer. I uh, long film, long film, mm. like nearly three hours long, but I was enthralled by it every moment. Um, I think you just had some excellent performances and. You know, I um, I didn't expect like Robert Downey Jr. to uh, like kind of turn up. That was yeah, that, that was, was a surprise. Very, you know, because everybody you know sees him as the 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 banter um, Soros that he is in. Billionaire, that's, yeah, that's as Iron Man and and other films. But uh, but no, he just um, he slays on that, and you know. Obviously, just just it's just so it's so good, and the like the drama unfolds, and the and it's just it's it's very anxiety inducing watching it, but it's a good kind of anxiety, and you're just like, you know, and you know, and in a sense that you kind of know what happens, you know, if you've read about history. No anyway, spoilers though. Uh, uh, no no yeah, spoilers. No. Yeah, yeah. Just in case people haven't got up to that part yet. In but it's history. how it's delivered, and it's um, yeah, it's just it's just excellent acting chops all around. Uh, 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 Mr. C. Murphy, uh, you know, did an excellent job at it, and uh, I, you know, not that I care about Oscars or anything like that, but if I, but if he doesn't win, I'd be like, hmm, okay, okay, you know, but uh, but uh. 
yeah, I yeah, I loved it. I I even got it on Blu-ray, and um, I think it might be. I don't know. It's it's up there with Christopher Nolan's best. I think. I don't know. I don't know. I think Dark Knight is still hmm. uh, th- thin, but uh, but I think it yeah. is it is difficult to compare them as well. So mm. it, like, I mean, it's like you know, sort of it's it's like comparing. I don't know a sort of an action movie and a serious drama. It's like yeah, not, like. The Raid is a great movie, but if you want a serious, slow-paced drama, then you, you know it's going to be a bad movie. So yeah, yeah, yeah of course. Yeah, but uh, I think what I like about it as well is, it's, because obviously it deals with physics and how they formulate the, you know, the, you know, it's the Manhattan Project, but um, how it's done, it's done in a way where, you know. You don't have to be a physics graduate or you know a mm. masters to kind of get the concepts. And uh, thanks to Christopher Nolan's way of visual storytelling, he does it in such a way that you're like, right, I get it. Also, shout out to um, Robert Pattinson because uh, basically while they were filming a uh, Tenet. Uh, he was reading a book about Oppenheimer, and uh, he was like, he oh. gave it to Christopher Nolan. He was like, "Oh, here you go. Uh, you might want to read this." And Christopher Nolan liked it so much that he made it into a movie. So it's ah. all because of Robert Pattinson. I so, did not that know that. That's cool, well, though. Yeah. Yeah, I will say I'm glad I saw Oppenheimer in the cinema because it was yes. a bit of a spectacle movie. I would say, mm. like, absolutely, kind of. When spoiler alert. They test the bomb. Yeah, there's a bomb in it. I'm sorry. Oh, wait, um, what? Oh. And the kind of Dang. silence in the cinema when, mm. when when that happened, and then the suddenness of when it actually goes off when they're doing the test. That was that was quite impactful. I would yes. say. Yes. That, <laughs> impactful. <laughs> Pun genuinely not intended. It was. It genuinely was quite impactful, and that's what I took away from from the experience. So yeah, I'm glad I saw it in the cinema. I don't think. I think maybe. That's a plus and maybe a minus because I think the spectacle made it more. It, it kind of heightened it, but I don't know if it would be quite as impactful watching it at home. Probably, yeah. yeah. I mean, it was. Uh, I mean, you, you got to understand that, that there was a big hubbub around this film. You know, it was. You know, it was. It was advertised everywhere. Everybody saying this film will ex- explode or whatever. <laughs> you know, yeah. It was a it was a real juxtaposition to the guy with the pink shorts in the front, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that was a thing. Uh, we all went to see the movie, and then we saw another movie afterwards. Well, pretty and another movie. Well, I, I I don't know what other movie you're talking about. I mean, maybe it'll come up later, or maybe uh, it won't. Hint, hint. Uh, anyway, sh- we'll move on to Tim's uh, nomination now. I'm hoping I got the correct poster for this, Tim. I you you will see this in the video. I'm ninety percent sure it is the Netflix movie. Yes. 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 I'm, I'm cool. pretty sure. It's if Netflix. you want to yeah, introduce yeah, yeah. it, I have the right poster. Then, thank God. Excellent. So my movie is a bit of a unexpected pick. I would say it's not from from this year. I, I regret. I think it came out in 2018, 2019. Mm-hmm. So it is a, a bit of a old one, but I did see it for the first time this year. So that's why it's my pick. And my pick is Apostle on, on Netflix. Okay. Now, Apostle is a bit of a... I would describe it as being a folk horror. Hmm. It's, it's got a very Wicker Man vibe. Um, but rather than being... Which, just to clarify, is it the Nick Cage vibe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's, no, it's no, about bees. No, no. yeah. uh, <laughs> no, no, to clarify, it's got... <laughs> It's got an original Wicker Man vibe in that in that kind of folk horror kind of sense, and a little bit in the plot as well, um, because this guy is his sister is missing, and it's set on like a Welsh island in, oh, rather than yeah. anywhere else. Oh. Um, directed by Gareth Evans, I believe. Oh, and okay. he did. Um, I'm pretty sure Gareth Evans did. Did he do the raid? Oh my! Am, am I thinking? I think so, that is the same guy. Yeah. So one of them yes, he did. did yes. One of them did yes. Rogue One, and one of them did the raid. There's Gareth Evans. This is the raid this... one. Okay. The raid oh, one. Yeah, cool. yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. It is the. Raid. He directed it and and um, wrote it as well. Oh, cool. And it stars um, oh, what was his name? Michael Sheen. 
Ah. And yeah, so th- this guy's sister has has disappeared. So he goes to this very mysterious island to try and try and find her. You can al- already see the similarities mm. to Wicker Man, and it turns out there's some weird religious cult because these people who found who kind of came to the island in the first place have found this strange goddess in the woods who is like the goddess of fertility and they kind of lock her up in a basement and make her you, you know we, if you stay down here we're gonna lock you up in the basement and uh, and make sure that you give us bountiful harvest mm-hmm. and um because they're not treating her very well everything starts going to shit and um the, the, mm-hmm. the harvests don't, don't happen as often. I won't say any more because it, it's going to go into spoiler territory. But it was a spooky movie. It was it was a spooky movie in that kind of folk horror sense, and it's done quite well, I would say. And it's very right. full of intrigue. And uh, I I'll have to check it out. Yeah, I, I was You've definitely me. yeah, I was definitely interested. Like looking up the poster because I I wanted to double double check I had the right movie in case I was you know, and yeah, I read a, a synopsis and were like, wow. This sounds great. I'm like, you know, tempted to uh, either resubscribe to Netflix or um, find a alternative method. But yeah, <laughs> it, it sounds really cool, though. Like, I I definitely uh, up for watching that. I think I think uh, having seen The Wicker Man and Midsummer, I I will probably like it. So I think I'm gonna go. Yes, mm. very those vibes. Very um, quite gory as well. Nice. Right. Well, uh, not on that topic. On to Tom's nomination, which is the last movie of uh, this episode. And what is your nomination, Tom? So, my nomination... Oh, hello? We all went to the cinema Hang on, this sorry, year. I... You, you broke you, off, Tom. You cut out. I broke off. I broke off. Where did I break off? You said, so my... And then it was right. Okay, uh, I will start again. Sorry, Red. It's all right. No, 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 it's cool. No, apologies harder. That's fine. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know why you broke off. It's cool. Apologies. <laughs> um, so, so my uh, choice for this year is an anime film we all went to the cinema to watch called Suzume. Um, oh. and it was an absolute a delight of a movie to watch. And I was actually kind of sad when it ended because it was so good. Um, but yeah, just to give like a little outline of it, um, it's a Makoto Shinkai film. Um, it's very coming of age. Uh, it's a bit of a road movie, uh, as in there's a lot of traveling in the movie. There's some beautiful visuals of the Japanese countryside. A very cute uh, chair. A very cute chair, very a very cute, cute chair. Um, I like the themes of the film. So um, it's to do with abandoned places in Japan. And I guess it's touching on like depopulation and stuff. Um, because all the places, basically, without spoiling it, um, essentially, this evil kind of what would you call it supernatural being um, is brought about by all these abandoned places and Susume and the chair uh, I forgot his name <laughs> the, chair. But chair. The, chair, the chair they've got to close the door these doors that open in these places uh, to stop this supernatural being overcoming uh, Japan, essentially. Does the uh, share believe in life after love or no? <laughs> <laughs> but um, I think another theme it covers as well is like the trauma in regards to the tsunami and the earthquake that happened in Japan in 2011. Um, because that's kind of touched on in the film as well. Um, it's overall just a really beautiful film uh, with some really good themes. I think um, it has kind of a soft romance plot to it, but it's... Instead it's, of a hardcore romance 
it's not yeah, soft. I, <laughs> having having watched I've watched a few Makoto Shinkai films, um, starting from five centimeters per second, and a a lot of the themes he does have in it involve like distance and like the connections, I guess, which sort of th- th- this one has mm. in speeds as well. Like, you know, th- there's a lot of themes about like the connections people had to a place, which is actually, I think, canonically what feeds this dark entity, you know, and stuff like that. So, yeah, th- there's a lot going on uh, in this movie. It's also one of the only movies I've watched twice in one year. Usually, after I've seen it once, I'm like, yeah, you know, but showed it to I a think- friend. The connections, I think, were really special because along, essentially, she travels from southern Japan all the way to the sort of north of Japan throughout the movie. Hmm. And along the way, she meets a cast of different people who help her along in her journey. It almost feels... Well, she's hitchhiking in a way in a lot of parts. I was going to say, do you know what it weirdly reminded me of when we saw it? It reminded me of Into the Wild, where he, like, travels around and meets all the, like, different people living in different ways, and they kind of help oh. him on his journey. And it, it was like, oh, it's, it's it's almost like the anime version of that, where she goes to these places, she's a bit of a hitchhiker, like, just on her own, and these people just kind of help her out, and she's, like, relying on the kindness of these people she'd never met before. And it was really mm. nice. That's cool. Yeah. I liked Into the Wild, so uh, I'll have to give her a watch. It wasn't as serious, and it had a much yeah. nicer and happier <laughs> yeah. ending. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah. It is a beautiful film. Uh, right. Well, that wraps up. I think the film segment of Talk Toys. Uh, it's on now to its smaller silver screen cousin, and that is TV shows. So again, these are TV shows we watched this year, but not necessarily shows that came out this year. And yet again, I want to say my nomination, I think it came out about two years ago. Uh, And my nomination is My Name. Uh, No, not literally My Name. Uh, It is a Korean Netflix drama called My Name. Uh, And actually, actually, its Korean name is actually literally My Name, as in that's, that's where all the Korean posters have it as well. In Oridian was such a common name in Korea. I, I guess it is. Um, but yeah, basically, as uh, viewers can probably tell from the poster that's up on screen, it's quite a... <laughs> Actually, it's got a lot in common with nobody, now that I come to think of it. It's a, a revenge plot about taking... Actually, yeah, it's literally about a character who gets involved, in a way, with a sort of synd- crime syndicate and tries to get revenge. Uh, except this is slightly different. It's about a girl. Uh, I can't remember her original name, but o- Osio, Osion, I think she, you know, was known as later on because that's her fake name. Uh, whose father dies when she's a teenager. She gets taken in by a mob, basically, and told to fight and fend for herself. Uh, and most importantly, she learns the skills to kill people so that she can hunt down her dad's killer. Um, it's like eight episodes, maybe it's ten. Uh, they're all about like you know forty minutes. It's a standard TV show length, and yeah, it's it's just really good. It is um, quite brutal at times, like quite I don't know. It's it's got a lot going on. There's you know as, as with a lot of shows, there's sort of like subplots and there's like intrigue from all the groups. Uh, there's you know she's got a keep her ties to this mob but also you know avoid the police but make sure that you know she's not suspected for being who she really is because she's got a fake name and such yeah just generally very solid um i've seen a few korean shows and movies now uh and i think this uh kind of as with squid game is kind of one of the peak ones that you know has become internationally fairly well known yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. I recommend if you've got Netflix or some other way of watching it, I I think it's worth a it's worth a watch. Mm. Nice. Right. On to Dan's nomination. Hang on. Okay. Dan, would you like to introduce your nomination? Yeah. So my uh my nomination for this year is I think you should leave. 
which is which is also on Netflix. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just a um, it's just a sketch comedy series. And but it's so inventive and wild and neurotic, and I I, I just love it. Um, like. Um, <laughs> Like there's one, I, I'll say an example. There's one one sketch where uh, he's in a drive-through and uh, he sees a, a guy behind him and he says to them, "Hey, I'll pay for this one, uh, and for the guy behind me." And she's like, "Oh, you're such a good guy, right?" So he does that, and then he quickly drives around, goes back into the drive-through, and then just yells, 55 burgers, 55 fries, 55 tacos," and just orders pretty much everything, just over the top, right? And and it's just come late in all this amount of money, and then this guy, the other guy in front gets really angry. He's like, what the hell? He's like, you got to pay for it. you got to owe me back. And then, and then somebody else comes around and says, like, and then they're doing the same thing as well, and it's just chaotic, and it's, it's really absurd, but it... Uh, I don't know. It just tickled my funny bones, and um, and that's just one sketch out of many that just resonates. Uh, as just stays in my head, and uh, yeah, I, I um, honestly just it, yeah, it's so funny. Uh, I I recommend it. So nice. Yeah. I'm I'm glad I got the correct poster for that as well. Uh, yeah, Tim, <laughs> Tim Robbins. I'm guessing Tim Robinson. The... Tim Robinson. Tim yeah. Robinson. Oh, Tim Robinson. Sorry, I misread the poster. Hey, okay, right. good. Uh, that's another thing. I wasn't quite sure if Dan was uh, trying to be passive aggressive when sending me his suggestions. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've not heard of it, but I'll I'll keep that in mind. That does sound quite quite fun. Uh, right on to Tim's suggestion. Tim, uh, I've not heard of this series. You're gonna have to fill me in on it. Uh, it's uh, I don't know. Yeah, I, I'll I'll double check. You've got the right picture for my one as well. Right, so hear me out. Bear with me on this one, guys. Mm-hmm. My pick for favorite TV show this year is Doctor Who. Okay. Because. Okay. All right, yeah. right, I'm giving you a few minutes to explain Give this. Give me a few minutes. They brought it back, man. They brought it back, and it's better. It's hmm. a million times better than anything we've had over the last three years. I, I agree with you. Oh, well, there we go. There we go. You, 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 did you watch all the episodes this I, year, Dan? I... Well, I watched the new ones of this year, the yeah. uh, specials that were an hour, and I mean the fact. I mean, basically, I'd, basically, I think BBC were like, "Oh shit, Doctor Who is tanking. What are we gonna do?" And then bring back it's... Russell T. Davis, David Tennant, and Catherine fucking Tate. That's all they needed to do, they, and they did it well. They burst through the the door and like, right, we've <laughs> and they just yeah yeah. They, I mean, it it's. I you know I watched it as well and I was thinking all right well let's see how this works and yeah it's 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 back Doctor Who's back and it's it's, back. Just... it's better than ever and I have a lot of opinions on it but the thing that they've done right is that Doctor Who has always been the kind of show that does tackle kind of um, social issues and when it was the Chris Tribble era with Jodie Whittaker it was always always felt like they were talking down to people it always yes. felt like. You guys should care about this. You guys should, and this is what you should think. And they did it in such a weird way that often was a massive misfire and like went down the complete wrong path yes. and went down a very preachy route, which mm. is very hard to watch. And also, it was very boring. Did lots of fucked up stuff the, to the canon uh, that the, was the unforgivable. Rosa Parks, the Rosa Parks episodes, especially, that yeah. was like, and it's like, it's yeah, I agree with you. It's done. It's there's the, the right way of. T- it's a way of tackling social issues, and I I think Russell T Davis, I mean, you know, uh, uh, you know, does it so well, and does. and so uh, he and, does it very well, and he's got experience from writing other shows where he's done similar things, yes. and yeah, it, it bleeds into Doctor Who so well, and he just makes it exciting at the same time. The return of David Tennant and Catherine Tate tickled my nostalgia bone, you know, that's an easy bone to tickle. But yeah. they did it well. And it could have been a disaster. They could have just rehashed different things from before and it could have been very boring. But they freshened it up. Um, they it. introduced the new character yeah. of Rose, um, Donna's daughter, which absolutely love. Really, really exciting. Brought back Mel, Bonnie Langford's in the specials, which absolutely fantastic. She was 
a refreshing like addition to everything and they just made it a lot good and the best i think the best episode of the year was wild blue yonder because it was such a bizarre episode it was such a weird episode that remind me which one that was the so that was the one that we didn't they didn't put out any information about it no no trailer footage from it was in the trailer and it was the one where they were at like the edge of the universe oh yes and they met yeah. the, like, the, the no things i don't want to go too much into it because i think going into it not knowing anything about it is kind of the best way to experience it but they go into this weird like cosmic horror body horror episode where oh, everything is absolutely absurd it's a lot of people were expecting it because it's like the 60th anniversary a lot of people were expecting it to be like oh they're gonna like do a plastic episode and like bring back old people but they went in a very different direction with it and it, it was just a pleasure to watch and it yeah. was just a very well a well done and self-contained episode yeah it was, um, well- Beautiful. What did you think of the uh, um, the 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 last one, the 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 Christmas Day, episode? the Christmas special? It yeah. was it was goofy, it was over the top, and I think Shruti Gatwa is like very much cemented himself as a very very good Doctor in that episode. That was the main thing I took away from it, and it adds that kind of intrigue as well at the end that I think Russell T Davis is very good at getting yes. people to come back and stick along with the ep- with the series because he clearly got them. But it's just going on in the direction, head, the direction they're going with it as well is uh, refreshing. It's refreshing. It's like, oh, okay, you know, and, and they're going with this, and then, and then, yeah, again, we won't go into too much detail, obviously, but I, there was, there was parts of it where I was like, like, you know, I, I had my hand on my head. I was like, what is going on? <laughs> what mm. is this? What is this? And you know, my family were looking at me, just like, what is this? But it was like of joy. It was like it was. It was all so absurd that even I was yeah. like going, "What?" And I like, yeah, <laughs> fun, dumb fun, like good dumb fun. I would say. And the Goblin song is a bop. Absolutely. Yes, yeah. it's a bop. It's a bop. Yeah, uh, I'm all for it. Nice. I I haven't I haven't got around to watching any. Of it. I like how we just fanboyed over Doctor Who for the like, yeah. last like five twenty twenty three. Yeah, and I, I will say that. I didn't. Yeah. I didn't do the thing where I like caught up on the Geordie Whitaker episodes because I can't. No. I, 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 I tried. I can't. And no, you don't I, need to. You absolutely don't need to. They no, make no. like slight references. Like it's still all canon, but hmm. I think you can very much tell they're trying to put it behind them. Well, I think what they're doing, they're doing a soft reboot. Um, yeah. Well, it's technically series one that's coming out this uh, twenty twenty four now. They're, yeah. they're calling it series one. Oh. So yeah, it is a bit of a soft reboot. Hmm. Which, yeah. Cool. I'm excited. I'm actually, yeah, I'm excited where it goes, so... Genuinely um, excited. Yeah, mm-hmm. lots of... I'm I'm very glad that it's back. And uh, I, I do have to mention, one of the best things they did is brought back Murray Gold as the composer. It ah. needs to be there the whole time, I swear to God. Nice. Uh, right, we will end the TV section with Tom's nomination. Tom, would you like to introduce your pick? So, my pick is something I watched not too long ago that did come out this year, and that Scott Pilgrim takes off. So, just to go into this a bit, I did not expect what they did with it. I expected... I don't want to spoil it, because I assume you guys might want to watch it sometime. Yes, I haven't seen it yet, so I'd prefer not spoilers. Um... It's not a, it's not a remake of the man. Uh, well, the comic hmm. or the film, it was completely different, and that's what I thought it would be. Oh, okay. um, just to go, not to spoil anything. There's a lot more character development of Evil Exes. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. It really, as opposed to like the movie, which did it a bit. Um, but it actually plays in more to the superpowers and, like, the video game tropes. Ah. Oh. Like, the subspace highway is in there and stuff. Mm. Um, good. all the voice cast return oh, nice. from the film. Um, yeah. and they hit it out of the park. It's absolutely phenomenal, the voice in. Um, 
yeah, I, I would have loads to say about this, right? But the departure is quite early on. Ah, I see. I get you. So uh, it's it's not something I can go into. All I'm saying is expect something really good, like mm. genuinely really good. And the way it's animated as well is like the comics. Nice. It's oh, got cool. really good animation, which um, obviously the style is heavily manga inspired, but it's mm. not. Um, it's not manga, but yeah, it's really good. And because I can't spoil it, like I said, I can't really speak okay. about it much. But que- uh, question: Is it better than the film, or is that yes. like Ooh, yes. really? Yeah. Oh, okay, that's a bold claim. Like, yeah. I, the film. yeah, yeah, yeah. I I'd happily go down and say it's better than the film. Wow. Um, from what I understand, like, um, the script was essentially. Signed off by oh, what was the director of the film? I forgot his name. Edgar uh, Wright. Edgar Wright. Edgar Wright. Yeah. So I think Edgar Wright had some involvement in the series. Oh, cool. Um, there's definitely there's the famous uh, cameo of Simon Pegg and Nick Frost in there. Nice. They actually got them to do some voices in there as well. Um, but yeah, it's it's really good. It's better than the film. And the film was really good. We all yeah, went to the cinema to watch I it remember. years ago. Rem- Twenty ten. That film was a surprise to us, wasn't it? Back yeah. then, mm. I didn't know what like, to expect when we saw it back in the day. Back in like what was it? Twenty ten? Like twenty years ago? Yeah. yeah. Oh. We're old. Yeah, yeah. I, I think generally the series has been very well received by everyone. Mm. Um, good I've seen a few people say, "Oh, why did they make something?" Else? No. They made something new, and it's fantastic to be new. It doesn't even try to be the original. That's good. It tries to be something completely different. When I say completely different, hmm. I don't mean like this slight deviations in the plot. No, the whole plot is different. Nice. So, yes, go watch it, guys. It's extremely good. It's on Netflix, but. Yeah, <laughs> maybe sail the high seas for that one. Yes, yeah, I think so. I yeah, think so. It's, it's been um, a very Netflix-heavy section as this, bar- uh, barring Doctor ne- Who. Yeah, Netflix took our um, shared account off us, so yeah, All yeah, right, that's then. why we're a little bit salty about that. Well, mm. on that on that topic, it's time to end this segment. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching not... part one of Talk Toys 2023 wrap up. Uh, I'll we'll be back. I'll be uploading the next part tomorrow, uh, and that will be covering books, music, and anime. So uh, stick around for that, and we'll see you guys shortly. Bye. Bye.